Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with a brief illustration of a covariance matrix. In order to illustrate the covariance matrix, I have opened a spreadsheet from Carol Alexander's book called Quantitative Methods in Finance. Her book contains this spreadsheet and more detail. This is from volume one of her recently published four volume set which is the definitive reference on market risk analysis. And what I'd like to just show is how we reach the covariance matrix, which is shown here in the bottom right in blue, and it's denoted by V. And this is a three by three matrix. Uh, it can expand to accommodate any number of assets. In order to get there, we need some input assumptions that concern the asset returns, but we don't actually need the asset returns themselves. We need the standard deviation of asset returns for each of the three assets. So here's our input assumptions. These can be changed. They're in red. 20%, 10%, 15%. We have three standard deviations. And then we do need the correlation between assets one and two, between assets one and three, and between assets two and three. That's all we need to get the covariance matrix here denoted in matrix notation with the capital V. We need two matrices. First, we have matrix D, which is a diagonal matrix. By diagonal matrix, I mean that it's square and has zeros in all of the cells except in the diagonal. And what do we have in the diagonal? We have the standard deviations. Here at row one, column one, we have the 20%. So that's the standard deviation, or I'm going to call that volatility of asset one. Here's the volatility of asset two at row two, column two, and the volatility of asset three at row three, column three. It's a diagonal matrix, only contains the volatilities zero, the element is zero in all of the other cells. Then here we have a correlation matrix. It's also square, in this case, three by three, three assets. One of the things that betrays that this is a correlation matrix is we've got one in the diagonal. We know this is not a covariance matrix because of that. Because at row one, column one, we've got the correlation of asset one with itself. Well, something is perfectly correlated to itself, so we should have ones in the diagonal. And then here at row one, column two, we have the correlation input assumption here of 80% the correlation between assets one and two. Notice it equals, and it should, the correlation at row two, column one. So really in terms of unique values, we only have the three right here, which are mirrored over here. So that's matrix C, which is the correlation matrix. So just as in our algebraic formula, where we saw that the covariance contains within it embedded the correlation, so it is also true of the covariance matrix which contains within it embedded the correlation. How do we get the covariance matrix? We simply need to multiply the matrices. Matrix D times matrix C, the correlation, times the diagonal matrix D itself again. So we have the product of three matrices here. Uh, taking the product of matrices does obey the associative property, so it doesn't really matter if we take D times C and then multiply that result by D, or if we take C times D and pre-multiply that by the D, we'll get the same result either way. So just to show you, if I take these values out, and if I start with a new MMULT, I can now multiply. I'm going to multiply D by C. So I select this matrix, comma, the correlation matrix. I'm going to close that. And so right here, I have multiplied D by C. And so I have this first product here. And then I just want to take that result and multiply it by D again. And so you can see I've got inside the formula here matrix D times the correlation matrix. And then I'm post multiplying that matrix result itself 
by again the diagonal matrix up here. So I've got D times C times D and again the order wouldn't particularly matter. I could have done CD first. I'm going to close that formula in Excel. We want to finish a matrix formula by hitting Control Shift Enter. It's easy to forget that. That's the key to ensuring that I have an array formula and what I've produced here is the covariance matrix and notice what's here in the diagonal here in the diagonal are what we variances and that's what we expect at row one column one what do we have this is a covariance matrix so row one column one is the covariance of asset one with itself what's the covariance of an asset with itself it's the variance so we get 0 0.04 which should equal, if I go up here to this asset, if I take the standard deviation and square it, I should get the variance, which is 0 0.04. So that's what I get. What we have in the diagonal, the covariance matrix, are the variances. And aside from that, here at row one, column one, we have the covariance between assets one and two. And naturally, it should equal the value that's in row two, column one. So that's how we got the covariance matrix. This is David Harper, the Binoc Turtle. Thanks for your time. I hope you thought this was helpful.